Hello, posture lovers. This week you're in for a real treat. Let me just say I'm a little out of sorts today. I'm staying here with my mom this week in my makeshift studio here in the guest bedroom. I seem to have forgotten everything, including video makeup and extension lights for my lights and mouse for my computer. But hey, the show must go on. As I said, I'm introducing a bit of a treat. It's going to be a weekly highlight. Haven't quite decided on the day yet, but it will be the same time every week posted on YouTube and Facebook. I'll be sharing one of your questions as a mini video presentation that I call Posturing 101. This is how it's going to work. If you've got a question for me about your posture or your health, you simply post your question on our Facebook page, forward slash posture doctor, include your name, where you're from and your question. Keep it short, please. You can also include an image of your posture or an x-ray, keep it interesting. And some of you may like to ask your question by video. That's okay too. Please keep it short and do have it posted to Facebook, not by email. Now, if your question is selected, you'll get a personal shout out from me, an entire video presentation answering your question and an exclusive invitation to join our private Facebook group at Posture Matters. So let's jump straight into this week's question from Victoria C, who enrolled in one of my online courses, Neck Hump, How to Get Rid of the Fat at the Top of Your Back. So Victoria says, I no longer have forward head posture, yay Victoria, but I still have a neck hump. What do I need to watch out for during the day that might be contributing to the problem, i.e. reading in bed with my head propped up, leaning forward to see things better, etc. Great question, Victoria. But before I answer that, let me just go into a little more detail about neck hump. Let's first review the cause of neck hump. Now you'll find an incredible amount of depth into the cause and the treatments of fatty neck hump in my online course. But for this mini presentation, let's just say there are three main causes. So the first cause is what I like to say, call put in the category of structural, where the ideal inward curving of the neck, which we call a lordosis, that's become flat or even reversed, which is called a kyphosis, not good. This is always, always due to a past trauma, Victoria, not from habits of daily living. This often confuses us. Now, the second cause is wear, wear and tear, which is simply a euphemism, which I never like to use because what it really stands for is degeneration of the discs between the vertebra or the joints in the neck. And when those discs become narrowed, the normal inward curve starts to straighten out. So in a sense, the second category is also structural. So you can kind of group those two together. Now, the third cause are medical issues, and these are pretty rare, but they include side effects of certain drugs and medication. Now, I list the entire uh, list of medications inside the course. Um, there are also things like horm hormonal conditions like Cushing's disease, very rare. Things like cysts and fatty benign tumors, which we call lipomas. So this category isn't something that I deal with. I leave that to the diagnosis of your medical healthcare provider like your GP. In the 20 years since I qualified as a chiropractor, I'd say most of the students, 95% plus plus of those students and patients that see me that have a fatty neck hump, well, it turns out to be a structural diagnosis. And that is good news because you can use the exercises and steps found in my online course to treat your own fatty neck hump. So back to Victoria's question. Now, she did say that she no longer has a forward, has forward head posture, but still has the hump. She wants to know what to watch out for during the day, certain habits of daily living. Now, since she first wrote this question, she's come back to me, she's had an x-ray, and she knows the cause of her neck hump is a flat curve from a past trauma. She's got the x-rays to confirm that, and now she's following the exercises in the course to reduce her neck hump. But she'd also like to know what to watch out for each day to make sure she's supporting the good changes and improvement she's making inside the course. Great, love to hear that. And I maintain that good posture is mostly a habit. So let's look at a few examples of changes that you can make to your daily habits. 
Okay, Victoria, you asked us about reading. So the first habit for our readers out there is to make sure your books are level with your eyes. Now, it looks a bit silly, right? Who's going to hold their book right up at their eye level? You're going to get pretty tired like that. So when I'm sitting to read, I like to prop my books up on about three sofa cushions. Um, you can, you can make do. So if you're on the subway, for instance, you can put your, your purse or your knapsack and then your prop your book on top of that if you're sitting down. When I'm in bed, I'm lying down with my shoulders usually propped up and my head on a pillow. And then on my lap, I might have another pillow or two pillows and then my book. Works really, really well. Okay, the second question or concern you had, Victoria, was leaning forward to see things like your mobile devices. So the second good posture habit is to make sure your screens, again, level with your eyes. So the woman you see here should ideally have her computer screen up a little higher using a couple of large books under her monitor. Now, if you use a laptop, really you need a separate keyboard so that you can lift the uh, monitor from your laptop up higher. And if, like me, you need reading glasses, you can simply increase your font size so you're not straining your eyes and leaning forward. On a Windows, I know that's Control and then the plus button. On a Mac, you can change the font size under your viewing options. Lastly, I'm a, bit, a big, big fan of what I call active sitting to maintain good posture. So you see kids doing this all the time. They innately know to fidget, wiggle, and stir in their seats constantly because that's what their nervous system needs. For those of you meeting me for the first time, I'm Dr. Paula Moore, the online posture doctor, and I've been helping people correct their posture and enjoy a better lifestyle for over 20 years now. Unlike many of the other, quote, experts out there, my aim isn't to fix your pain. Instead, my focus is on your structural problems. In other words, the root cause of your poor posture and pain. If you'd like me to help you, please post your questions on our Facebook page, forward slash posture doctor. Any question will do. Don't forget, include your name, where you're from, and your question. And if, like Victoria, you have a neck hump and you're concerned, you're worried about it, you could join Victoria and a thousand plus other students who are already improving their neck humps on the course. Please go ahead right now and click the link to enroll. I'll be sure to also include a link in the description below if you're on YouTube and watching it there. And I'll see you next week when I'll be answering Liz J's question about how to stop habitually slumping. Don't miss it. It's going to be a good one. Thank you so much for watching today. Bye-bye for now.